Hey, I have owed you a green stock update for a little bit now. I think I planted this out about three months ago almost. So I want to do that. But also I want to talk to you today about nasturtiums. They're one of my favorite flowers and they can be difficult to grow in North Texas. It's, it's hot here and we stay pretty dry throughout the summer. But I think I finally got the knack of it. Let's look at the green stock and then we will talk a little bit more about nasturtiums. All right, so in case you are new here, I'm McCare with More Prana Gardens. And like I said, I'm gardening in North Texas where we get pretty hot, very hot, and uh, it stays pretty dry. We do have a lot of rain in the springtime and fortunately that has been going on. The gardens are looking okay. I have a lot of planting still to do. Those are staying hydrated. Um, anything potted is needing a little bit extra water. And so the green stock is really helpful for that because you water through the top and it trickles down through holes in the bottom of each pocket, as well as there's some trays in there that have drip holes. Right now, my green stock needs to be watered, but since I do need to take it apart and move some plants out of it, I will wait because water is heavy and the layers get heavier when they're watered. So it makes more sense for me to do this with it dry. But I do want to give you a quick look at what nearly three months of growth can look like in a green stock. You can see I have a lot of flowers and herbs in here for now. The calendula have gone absolutely wild. The nasturtiums are doing beautiful. The dwarf zinnias, I should have put less of them in here, but they're doing great. This thing has been covered in bees and wasps, which aren't my favorite insects, but they're here and they are pollinators. Oh, look, here's a new bee. I'm gonna take you off the tripod and just kind of give you a little overview of this whole thing. So let's start down here at the bottom. I have my green stock on the mover base and that has wheels. Half of those wheels lock and then I have the drain tube. So it sits on there. It doesn't spin like the spinner base, but you can turn it. So I've got a huge borage in here. That is two borages. I started those from seed. I need to divide one out. Not sure if that's happening today. I have some dwarf comfrey that has been very happy. I can probably divide that. I don't think I'm gonna be dividing like the lower three tiers today. I think I'm gonna concentrate on the top. My chamomile has not started to flower yet and it's looking a little peaked. I started this from seed as well and I'm gonna divide that too. I have scallions. Um, around the other side, I have some red scallions and I have some chives in here too. I've got lots of lettuce, which is still doing really well, surprisingly. I have those dwarf zinnias. This is the Cupid mix from Baker Creek. Here's some of the nasturtiums. This is the first year that I've had them this big and I really attribute that to the green stock and how well it stays watered. I love this one. Freckles or speckled gem, I don't remember. It's one of those, it's, um, oops, it's like a little gem like this, but with spots and it's very tasty. It has great texture too. <laughs> More nasturtiums. My calendulas are so happy. This is my skincare plant. These flowers, I remove them. I I leave a couple a day for the bees, but I remove most of the flowers every day. I dry them. So once the flowers are dry, they go into a jar. Once I have enough dried flowers in that jar, they will go into oil. They'll sit there for two months and then they will get mixed with beeswax on the stove to make a salve. And I use the oil without the wax as skincare and then the salve for other things on skincare. That is my primary medicinal plant that I use the most often right now. See, look y'all, I told you, they're just wild. The nasturtiums are everywhere. I've got to split some of those out. My clover's not flowering yet, but it's very full. The dill is going wild. I cut off half of my lemon thyme like a week ago and it's filling back out already and i wanted to show you specifically the strawberry plant is flowering in here it looks really happy but the pineberry plant this thing is not flowering yet but one runner two runner and then i i let one runner come i tucked it behind and let it come over here where there's kale Let's see if I can get into these nasturtiums. Let's see, there we go. It rooted in really well and it started sitting out runners. So I stuck a pot over here, which this means I can't turn my green stalk right now unless I move everything with it. But I have that one rooting. 
So you can see that's doing really, really well. This, this is doing gorgeous, but then we do have some little trouble spots and this is why I need to divide it out. Aside from the nasturtium was trying to take over the planet. So you can see this little jigsaw pepper right here. He was getting shaded out by the Merlot lettuce and this nasturtium and this zinnia. So I want to divide out at least one of the zinnias. I was going to take this nasturtium out, but then it's just too pretty and I can't. So it's going to have to stay. This will be eaten soon. On the other side of the one with the gorgeous flower, I have a tricolor sage, which I was also trying to give more light, but I think it's going to be okay like this. And then over here, believe it or not, there is a Thai chili. So I need to get this little guy uncovered. And I think this is like three nasturtium plants. Let me get this thing taken apart and at least start to work on the top tier and I'll show you what we're doing with that. I'm short. <laughs> Massive short people problems. Well, hopefully the other layers will be easier. Let me get you turned around so you can see what we've got going on. <laughs> I haven't taken it apart in a while and there were so many plants in the way that I couldn't get my arms in there and then it was above my shoulders and this whole thing. That was an adventure. <laughs> but now the top tier is down. I took the watering tray off the bottom of it just so it wasn't sitting on it and I'll rinse that. I'll rinse everything that I work with. So we don't get anything in the middle but I do have a couple of little baby seedlings that are just kind of weeds. And aside on that word, weeds are just plants that are growing where you don't want them. If you have a rose bush show up in your kitchen floor, I don't know how that happened, but it would be a weed because it's a plant growing where you don't want it. Even though it's a favorable plant, it's where you don't want it. So anything can be a weed if it's growing in the wrong spot. I'm going to pluck them because they're not going to get any sun in there anyway. What we have that we have to handle, I decided I'm leaving this pretty one in. Tricolor sage is going to have to deal with it. I'm going to pluck one of these lettuces. He's gone. And I'm going to set him aside so the chickens can have him. I'm thinking about taking out this kale. It's getting pretty ragged. It's ragged jack kale. It's actually getting ragged though. It's looking all bug eaten. But then again, the chickens like it. So maybe I'll leave it. The main thing I'm going to focus on is these nasturtiums over here. There's another plant over on this side. And this is actually four. So I'm going to take this out and I'll refill it with soil. I brought a little nursery pot over. Oh yeah, if you want a shirt like this that actually has sleeves, it's just hot and I rolled them up. You can get one from Eric Sider and I will put a link to the shop down in the description. Okay, so I brought my little nursery pot over so that I can transfer the ones that I'm taking out into the pot. And then I have some potting soil that I've already mixed up with cocoa core and worm castings to replace the soil that gets taken out with them. I'm trying to be careful not to cut the um, the roots of the pepper too much. I am cutting into the roots of the nasturtium and I'm not too terribly worried about doing that. All right. <laughs> you can see down here we've got one, two, three, four different plants. Now I started these all in a five by five microgreen tray, like this one that is currently hosting ginger. And then I just pulled out little groups of them and I didn't mean to put four together, but that's what happened. I think a couple of them might've come up after I transferred. So the discussion that came up in a gardening group yesterday or day before yesterday, it was that nasturtiums don't do well in North Texas, that they don't take our heat and that you can't transplant them. I understand why people think those things. I have been trying to grow nasturtiums. I think the first year I tried them was 2012. The advice from cooler regions was you just plant them and they go crazy and you're going to have too much of them and they're going to reseed themselves and you're just going to have them everywhere and they're going to be all lush. And that never happened for me. And I thought too that we couldn't grow them here because it was too hot and too dry. But what I figured out eventually, like two years ago, was that they don't like the direct sunlight when it's really hot. I had some growing down between some potted plants. I had some growing behind something. 
and those did really well. They got like this big, um, a single plant got like this big by the end of summer. For our belief here that they're not gonna do well was amazing. I think what it is that they need in our climate, and I, this is my own experience. I haven't, you know, verified this with any kind of garden in North Texas experts. I haven't gotten Neil Sperry's opinion on it or anything like that. What I have observed is that in spots where they can be shaded from the afternoon sun and have a spot where they might stay a little bit wetter, like the one that was between potted plants was getting watered more often because it was between potted plants and the one that was back in the corner, it was in a little bit of a dip where it stayed wetter down there. So with shade and a little more water than you would give the rest of your garden, they're gonna do fine here. They are edible, the flowers, the leaves and the stems. So the flowers and the leaves are both just, pop them off and eat them. That one's spicy. Woo! They're usually not very spicy. The flowers, that was, woo. Maybe it's because it's a little bit dry. The leaves are similar. It's kind of a wasabi flavor, they say, but I don't, I don't eat a lot of wasabi, so I'm not sure. And then on the stems, I'll show you on the one from the flower I just took off. When I harvest these and some lettuce and some green onions for my salads or whatever, I put the stems in with my green onions when I cut them up. And then that gives just a little, whew, a little peppery. It's stuck in my tooth, so I keep tasting it again. It's very good though. So I have these now and I'm gonna find a place for them in a little bit, but let's fill in the gap that I made. That helps better. All right, so I didn't take out that much soil with it and the rest of this looks pretty good on soil. So I'm just gonna fill up this little gap right here. While I have it all open, I'm just gonna throw a little bit more worm castings in the center where the water trickles down. Remember when I took apart my worm bin and I said, oh, there's some little babies in there and I'm gonna leave them in my castings. They're growing. There's also a little centipede in there. We're gonna get him out. Just a little. All right. Okay, I'm gonna call this level reset. Um, I really don't wanna move that. You know what, I will take out this one, that lettuce that was closest to the jigsaw. It's just a few leaves and I've got plenty more and the chickens will appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and I will pull the next tier down and see if that goes any better. <laughs> Wish me luck. Oh, that was so much easier. <laughs> Let's see what we have going on in this tier. This is three dills. Um, I just seeded these in here. Oh man, hang on. Mm, okay, <laughs> that's better. They smell so good. All right, so this is three dills. That was not intentional. I just seeded them in here. I think I'm gonna take, oh, it's four. Okay, I think I'm gonna take two of them out because it's kind of two and then two. This lettuce, I'm gonna leave. I'll just clean it up. I might divide the clover really thick, and I think that's whose roots are growing into the center. I'm definitely taking out at least one of these mini um, zinnias. I'm going to leave all of the red scallions in there, and I might thin out this lettuce. It's starting to bolt anyway. All right, that's the game plan. Let me get my stuff. Okay, I went ahead and got those nasturtiums planted out because they weren't in water and they were already looking sad. That also gave me room to put other plants in here. Let me make a very important note. I am doing this when it's sunny. This is not a good plan. <laughs> this can burn the roots of the plants, but I was sick yesterday and I want to be finished today. And also I want to record this for you when there's light. Ordinarily, this is something that you would do early in the morning or at dusk or on a very cloudy day. So I am risking my plants by doing this, but I have an abundance, so it's okay. If I lose them, I lose them. Swaha. My dilly friends, I think, I think I'm going to take out the taller spindly two and let them get more sun. I'm going to be careful with the roots on these. I'm going to come out kind of wide. Probably going to move these down by the tomatoes. That way when they flower, they can attract the parasitic wasps that prey on the tomato hornworms. 
So kind of get that whole little ecosystem going. I think I'm going to take out the center two on these. They're the biggest, but I think the outside two will fill in better if I do that. And I don't know where I want to put these. That sun is one reason I have that pot that I'm sticking these straight down into. That way at least, yeah, I'm exposing them to the sun, but I'm getting it out of it. I'm getting them out of the sun as quickly as I can. Be stubborn, make faces. Yes, it worked. Be stubborn, make faces. My motto. Kind of. I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to take out the lettuces that are looking like they're already kind of on the way out. And I think maybe that'll help these guys stand up a little bit more. Oh, and I was going to do this. I think this is red clover. That is a thick root mat. They're tangled. Be right back. Okay, soil to fill in, a little bit of worm castings. Now I'm gonna call that one reset. So I decided I'm gonna leave this tier intact. I think this is a cosmos and this is a cosmos. I seeded them into this pocket when I seeded the calendula and I thought that they would grow before the calendula did. They did not. This lettuce is still going. I'm gonna let it keep. This is two nasturtiums, but they're doing fine and they're not shading anything. I will go ahead and get the spinach plucked off. No, I'm not gonna eat it and it's getting too spindly. I think once we just clean everything up, it's gonna be okay on this level. Compost run, be right back. Okay, this might be part of the watering problem I'm having is some of these got soil in them and their little holes got plugged up. I think that'll be okay. Okay, so I've just been fertilizing these with compost tea and I am currently out, but I just got a new um, air pump for my compost tea and new bubble stones and I have a compost tea bag on the way. So I'm probably gonna get part of that set up later today and then I'll be back to fertilizing them next week. So I'm gonna get the um, watering trays rinsed out and I'm gonna start watering from, the, from here and then I'll set them back up. You see this, right? I've, I've never, I've never had a calendula do this. This is wild. It's huge. I love it. As I said, rinsing. We're already to the part of the year where the hose water is hot. Like, that's hot. So I'm gonna let some of that water go out. Here, we can get these pots over here. The watering tray has some holes in its low spots. Boom, boom. So those line up with the centers of pockets when you're putting it back together or when you're putting it together for the first time. Now, when you water all the way through the whole system from that big top tray that is the same color as your green stock planter, it trickles down through the center tube into each of these. And then each of the pockets has a hole that trickles down as well. So you're getting a couple of ways that the water is going down. Here, come see. And then it trickles out through the holes and then you can see it getting wet all around the holes. That's how it waters. Butterfly. I'm gonna grab some worm castings for this level too. And I guess now would be a good time to harvest those uh, calendulas on this plant while it's all open. So I cut them above the next bud. Sometimes that's really close to the bud or to the flower. And sometimes you'll have like a whole stem to work with. I'll leave that one. That was totally an arbitrary choice. So I just cut it off right here, like so. I haven't been putting these in the dehydrator because I haven't been picking enough of them at a time to justify using electricity. So what I've been doing is just, I take the flower and I have some little tea towels on my seedling rack and I put them face down like this for the first day so that they get flat, makes it easier for them to dry. And then on the second day, I flip them up and let them sit like this. And they sit like that for like two or three more days after that, depending on 
the humidity and the heat in my room. But that is what I do with my calendula flowers. That's how I dry them. Uh-oh. So I decided I wanted the calendulas on this side, so I need to come over here. Yeah, I like that balance better with the calendulas on each side. That does kind of make the gorgeous nasturtium grow into a calendula. I'm going to turn it one pocket. We get it all lined up and then we make sure these little feet lock in on the little feet grabbers. I don't know what they're called. There we go. Yeah, that's better. You think? That's better, right? Still balanced with the calendulas, but now this gets to shine. And that'll give more light to the jigsaw pepper. Okay, good. Oh, this pocket was supposed to be lemongrass, and I did it, and then we had a freeze. So I need to redo those today, too, probably. All right, and I'm lining up the tiny hole with the center of the pocket, like that. And I'm going to grab these, and then I'll do the top tier. I'm not looking forward to doing the top tier. This one's looking haggard. I'm going to let it stay for the bees and I'm going to take the fresher ones. Okay. You know, I should have mentioned if you are messing with calendulas, they are very sticky. It's the resin. That is the medicine. So if they're really sticky, that's okay. That's actually good. There's so many butterflies and bees and things out here today. It's beautiful. Okay. Top tier. Wait. No, I did it wrong. This is top tier. Shoot. I'm gonna let it stay. No, I'm not. Shoot, hang on, let me think about it. Okay, I took a look at what's in the, what was the second tier and what's in this one. And that tier has everything upright and nothing trailing. I'm gonna let that be the new top tier. That way nothing from that will shade any of the little things that we want to protect in here. I hope. <laughs> you can always change it back. Whew. That lettuce looks really bad now that I'm looking at it up there. That's okay, I can switch that out with something else in a little while. Not a little while today, mind you. Not a little while today. A little while like another day. All right, and then the top watering tray clicks on just like the tiers do, but it's going to be this little thing that clicks into the other little thing, you know, little things. I don't know names. They're things. And then I'm just going to fill this up. All right, so that's how the green stock is doing. I do need to go get those other things into the ground and get everything watered in that I just transplanted. And I've got a lot of other stuff to do out here because I'm playing catch up from being sick. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. And if you are in a hot, dry climate, I hope that you feel a little more daring with your nasturtiums now. <laughs> maybe try some in the shade where they're gonna get extra water or maybe just tuck some away where you can pamper them. But give it a try and see what you can do. I would love to take you around for more of this, but my phone is out of memory. If you would like to donate to helping me get a new camera that would have more memory, my buy me a coffee is down in the um, description box below. <sighs> the wind just took all those pots I put in, or all those plants I put in that pot. All right, so anyways, if you would like to donate to the new camera, my buy me a coffee is in the description box below. And if you want $10 off your first green stock, also in the description box down below, there is a friend and family code that will get you $10 off your first green stock order. It's worth it. <laughs> I'm trying to decide when I'm buying my second one. It's, it's really, really worth it. I love it. And that big announcement is coming and I will see you soon. All right. Take care. Later, y'all.